praise the name of the Lord. It's that moment when we bring to you the gorgeous woman show. And as always, I'm delighted to be your host, Reverend Ruth Wamoyo, coming live uh, from Nairobi. And uh, we are delighted that you're watching. And uh, the, the inspiration behind the Gorgeous Woman Show is not just about to tell about sad stories and just expose our, our sad life. No, uh, it is basically to encourage somebody that is going through a, a tough moment uh, that to know that God is there. And even if it looks very dark right now, you can come out. If the story of Job was never written, uh, then would not have a reference point. If the story of Hannah was not written, the story of Sarah, the story of Esther, the story of many women in the Bible like Abigail, if it was never written, then we would never have a source of encouragement. And as always, I bring to you wonderful guests that are gracious enough to come and share their life. And the one that I, I'm hosting today is a pastor. Uh, she's Pastor Dauphin, married for 22 years. I know she has a story to tell us. But above all, telling us about her journey through ministry, the ups and downs, and we are so delighted to have her here. Uh, Karibu sana, Pastor Dolphin. Thank you, Reverend. Yeah, I'm most, uh, most humble to have you around. Thank so you, So feel happy. welcome and share your heart out. Thank so you. kindly introduce yourself. Who is Pastor Dolphin? Tell mm -hmm. us your name, your husband, uh, where you minister, because you are a pastor. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I am Pastor Dolphin. Mm -hmm. I am a minister of the gospel. Amen. Since when I was a youth, mm -hmm. I was serving just as a normal servant. Amen. When I got married now, I have entered in the real part of it. Yes. I am a wife of Reverend Dismas Onjula Ogalo. Mm -hmm. I'm a mother of three kids, two ladies, one boy. Praise, mm -hmm. Grace, and Israel. The yeah, land praise, of Israel, Grace, of and Israel. Jacob. How nice. I'm happy to be here. Amen. Thank you. Wow, what a blessing. Uh, could you tell us where you pastor? Yes, we pastor in a state called Lakisama, mm -hmm. near Kasarani Playing Ground. Mm -hmm. It's a new estate. Mm -hmm. We have a church there. We have a big church. We mm -hmm. have congregation around 200 mm -hmm. uh, big people. Yeah. And we have teens, we have youths, we have yes. Sunday school. Mm -hmm. So we are doing well. We are around 500. Wow, in great. I in love the way that. you are proud of every milestone. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's always a joy to see people gathered under you know, a church just to worship the name of the Lord. Yes. Uh, so where do you come from originally? Um, what uh, born are you? Are your parents alive? Just to get to know you on a personal level. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I am a Luo lady. I'm coming from uh, Kindu Bay. Kindu Bay. Yes, but I'm brought up in Tana River, in okay. coast region. Oh, you traveled all those miles. Yes, my oh. father and my mother were there doing business, although my father was a fisherman and mm -hmm. my mother was a businesswoman, mm -hmm. so we were brought up there. Okay. Uh, my dad passed away 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. My mom also passed on uh, eight years ago. Eight years ago. But we are grateful. We are doing well. Great. I'm the fifth born in our family, mm -hmm. and that number has been working gracely in my life. Mm -hmm. I'll speak it later. Number five mm -hmm. has a lot till this time. So here, how many are you? All of you in total? Uh, we were twelve, but hey. five passed on. We've remained seven. Five passed on. Yes. Old age or uh, oh. just issues of life? Uh, no, just issues of life. Um. Before they got married and before they married. We'll talk about that. And mm -hmm. um, I can see my director telling me it's almost time that we need to take a break just <laughs> when we have begun. And uh, <laughs> me and Pastor Dolphin are going to get into it. And I believe if you're in ministry, yes. if you've come from such a background as she has come from, you're going to learn something. Mm -hmm. And always uh, remember to subscribe to our channel, Covenant Television Network. Mm -hmm. And of course, Reverend Ruth Wamoyo. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get many videos. And of course, other older episodes that we have done. Yeah. See you after the break. Welcome back, our viewer. It's always a joy to have you on board. The best thing you can do right now is share with a lady a beginner watch party. You never know who you will touch. I've had amazing testimonies of people that watch the Gorgeous Woman show and they live to tell the story of encouragement. And of course, some even like uh, reached out to our guests for help and others that needed help have been connected to help. So you never know what you're doing. Uh, you may be touching a life without knowing. My guest is none other but Pastor Dolphin. 
name. And uh, I really didn't get your husband's name, but I think it's Dismas. Dismas Onjula. Onjula Ogaro. Yes. Yeah, that's great. So <laughs> she's also married. But uh, we, we, we finished the show on a bit sad note mm -hmm. that you lost both of your parents yes. and you lost both of your siblings. Yes. So who, who left first? Is it your parents or your siblings? My siblings. They left first uh -huh. and then my parents. But we are now seven in number, the remaining ones. So what happened? Uh, my dad mm -hmm. was sick. Mm -hmm. And when he went to the hospital, mm -hmm. he was very sick mm -hmm. and we needed a lot of money. Yeah. And as a family, you could not afford it. Mm -hmm. And then he succumbed. Mm -hmm. My mother suffered from TB. Mm -hmm. TB ate his lungs mm -hmm. and he was too replaced. Wow. But because of lack of finance, we could wow. not afford. Mm -hmm. And she even, left. Yeah. What of your other siblings? Uh, did they die young? or, or? Uh, They die when they are young. Okay. Yes. So they would be born and then they, they just die? Yes. How was it for you as a family? Mm, it was sad. Some mm. we were just told by my, our parents, two of them, but mm. the other ones, the, my elder sister died, he left three key children. Mm -hmm. Two boys, one dead, they are alive. Mm -hmm. And my brother died in a school. Mm -hmm. We were just called. But when my parents went, he was already taken to a mortuary. We could not follow the story because lack of money. We needed a lawyer and we could not afford. And mm -hmm. it, just that way. And he, had, he didn't have history of sickness? No. Okay, did those incidences put a strain on your relationship as a family or how did you go through that season? By then I was young, mm -hmm. so I could not go for it so much. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, the other... Three died when they are young, immediately mm -hmm. after they were born, mm -hmm. they died. So how would you describe your mother? My mother mm -hmm. is my role model up to date, up wow. to now. Mm -hmm. I cannot refer any other woman I know. Mm -hmm. I know my mother mm -hmm. is the best mother mm -hmm. in all women, mm -hmm. followed by my spiritual mother, but I love my mom. She's so what are these virtues in your mother that make you feel like she's the best mother? Uh, my mother taught us to do little things. Mm -hmm. He said, my daughters, I have nothing to give you, mm. but I want to train you doing things with your hands. Oh. So he taught us many things that somebody can do by Like what hand. can you do? Can you weave? What can you do? I be can famous? weave. Uh -huh. Uh, I can plant hair, I can cook meals and sell. Uh -huh. She taught us to be hard-working ladies, not yeah. to depend on any other. Yeah, why I'm asking you that is because you, you, you're a mother to many by the virtue of the position you hold. Mm -hmm. And one of the greatest challenges that I've observed in many ladies that have sat on that seat where you're sitting, mm -hmm. majority of them, I mean not, or maybe a significant number of them, uh, the, all the, the bad experiences and encounters they've had is either the, the, the failure of a parent mm -hmm. and mostly mothers that when they don't play their role, they've mm -hmm. gone through abuse, they've given up in life, some of the many horrific <laughs> stories that we've had. So maybe me asking you that question may inspire a woman like right now people are at home with their kids. Yes. You would inspire because some of us learn small skills like fetching water, mm -hmm. cutting firewood, um, cooking food, all, all these things. And maybe probably in the modern day, um, they, we may not have those privileges, but there are skills that a mother can instill in a kid mm -hmm. that will make them better and, uh, of course, spend their time wisely. Mm -hmm. So uh, apart from the, the hands-on jobs that your mother taught you, what are those values that she taught you that are still with you right now? And that's why you're a pastor. Uh, another one is respecting God mm -hmm. and serving God. Mm -hmm. My mom used to take us in the church, although by then we were Legio Maria. Uh -huh. And then when we went to coast, we were going uh -huh. in a Catholic church. Uh -huh. But he made sure every Sunday we mm -hmm. have to go to church. Mm -hmm. That's also had inspired my heart to respect God mm -hmm. before I got born again. So what kind of kid were you? Were you a naughty kid or were you the obedient one? Mm, I was in between. In me? <laughs> <laughs> Before them, I was obedient, yeah. but when I was out, I yeah. was a bit naughty. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Do you remember any serious beating you are ever given when you are a child? Yes. Eh. I was more so eh. uh, disturbing my brother, immediate brother. Eh. We used to fight eh. and I was to come <laughs> crying as if I'm the one who was, eh. <laughs> was beaten. Yeah. But God is good. God is good. <laughs> so when did you now get born again and come to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? I got born again in 1994 when mm -hmm. I was in my fourth form. Mm -hmm. That is when I accepted Christ as my personal savior. Mm -hmm. I was sick by then. Mm -hmm. I accepted Christ. We had a weekend challenge in our school. Mm -hmm. So I went and accepted Christ from that time. Mm -hmm. um, walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell us now the journey between now um, high school you finish at what point did you get married because I know the journey of marriage and ministry is the core of your story. Yes. So uh, at what point did you get married and just tell us that transition from now being a girl mm -hmm. to, a, to, to a married woman. Oh thank you. I got born again in 1994. Yeah. After that I went to a village where we are living. Mm -hmm. It was called Garrison. Mm -hmm. I went to my pastor, by then he was a pastor. Mm -hmm. Now he's a bishop. Mm -hmm. I served under him. In fact, I started serving as nobody in the church. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that there is something that God has prepared good ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Last week I was serving in Oyugis and I, the Holy Spirit is in, inspired me to mm -hmm. tell them my real story because I was encouraging them mm -hmm. to serve God. Mm -hmm. Under this man, we have a latrine. I was a youth by then, one mm -hmm. latrine. Mm -hmm. That latrine was being used by Sunday school, teens, youth, and the whole church. Mm -hmm. uh, the other Sunday I went to the toilet, I found gold on the top of the latrine. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then when I came back, immediately Reverend went to the latrine and I imagined my dad seeing those things mm -hmm. and then passing coming on the altar. That is where I started having a burden to serve God. Mm -hmm. And I'll say from today henceforth, I'll not sit on the front because I was a worshiper. Mm -hmm. I'll be sitting at the back. It's better. I don't serve on the altar. I serve at the back because we have only one latrine. When I see my dad mm -hmm. and my mom going to the latrine, mm -hmm. I'll better go first and remove those goals, yeah. drop them yeah. so that my dad can enter when it is clean. Wow. The second thing, uh, there was a lot of negligence in the service with women. Mm -hmm. I saw my spiritual mother coming with a kikoi. We call it a kikoi. Yeah. He wipes his chair. Mm -hmm and my spiritual father's chair and then they sit. The, also, the Lord spoke to me that that is not right. Wow. The first burden I got was to make sure the toilet is clean when they are going, because when we are in the church, you know Sunday schools, they are young, yeah, yeah. they just go and they fear that hole. Yeah. So they put it on the, on the top of the yeah. toilet. The second burden that I was given was to clean the church. The church to make sure the chair of my dad and my mom is clean, to clean the whole church. Then we wash. Now your dad and mom no, is the pastor and the wife? No. Uh -huh. My dad and my mom uh -huh. got born again when they were just about to die. Now I'm talking about- So it's about actually my... your real parents? No, uh -huh. this is now my spiritual parents. Okay. They are not. Okay. So the Lord gave me a burden to clean the latrine. Now the Lord is giving me another burden to clean, to clean the, the church. church. Uh -huh. I did that. The Lord promoted me to be a singer. Now I was singing in the church. The Lord also gave me a burden to serve in crusades. That one before I'm married. So after five years, I got my husband. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, th within these five years, was it easy or what were the challenges that you faced uh, as a youth? Because there are many people, youths who are serving God and they mm -hmm. don't want to do such dirty jobs. They want to be in the limelight and uh, just shine and wear nice uniform. Yes. The first thing, I love God. Yeah. And I said something in my heart that I'll not sit and see the work of God is, is stunted or is getting ashamed or mm. is being ashamed. Yes. I'm there for him or I'm there for that work. Mm. So being a youth, it was a bit challenge. I'm, I finished my fourth form. I went to the village. There was no work to do, mm -hmm. but I still went to my spiritual father. That is my bishop now. Mm -hmm. 
to serve, to help mama to mm. serve in his house, mm. to in her house when there is visitors. Yes. I go there serving. Sometimes I get small jobs like washing clothes for people. Yes. Because I wanted after after when I got born again, my spiritual father taught me how to live. Yes. So it's better I do funny jobs. Yeah. That is right according to my salvation. Yeah. So I was washing clothes, I was fetching water for people, mm -hmm. uh, serving in the house of my bishop mm -hmm. till the Lord brought my husband. That is now five years after, after. when I was got born, I got born, born, born again. again. Yes. Mm -hmm. My husband came to Tana River. Mm -hmm. He came as a mechanic. Mm -hmm. But after being there as an engineer, the Lord called him. Mm -hmm. So he came under my bishop. Mm -hmm. My bishop allowed him and gave him a branch to serve. Mm -hmm. So he served for two years and then we got married. Uh, no, you've jumped. You've <laughs> Yes. So what was happening in these two years, Pastor Dolphin? So in did this... he come and then how did... There is a young girl watching, like serving God. Uh -huh. And the, the husband is there and all, maybe the person that is the husband-to-be. Mm -hmm. So we, we, it's always good, like on the gorgeous woman, to keep it real. Yes. So that there is, a, there is somebody that needs to be inspired. Mm -hmm. So that, is, they, they, you know, in our, maybe in our time... Uh, courtship was not allowed you know you just and people are generally nice mm -hmm. yeah people are generally nice and trained but for this the, the era that we are in is totally different in fact it's totally different so we need to inspire these young girls uh, that's completed form four and has a dream for marriage yeah so when this brother came what were the qualities that drew him to you and uh, like how was the journey okay. for the two years? <laughs> Uh, my husband, mm -hmm. now, my now husband was serving in yeah. another branch. Yes. I was in the main church. Mm -hmm. So we used to meet in crusades, yes. seminars, mm -hmm. overnights. We have to come together yeah. uh, once in a month. Mm -hmm. So from that time, I saw him as just a mere brother. Yeah. He loved God. He served God. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if there is anything. Yeah. But the Lord started making few points different from other mm -hmm. boys. You mm -hmm. know, there is a normal love, yeah. a normal love yeah. among the brethren. Mm -hmm. But this love mm -hmm. was now unique. Yeah. And then I started looking for qualities, a man that I love. You yeah. know, I am an intercessor. So I wanted also somebody who can seek God. We can seek God together. So by this time you started praying for a husband? Yes. Okay. In fact, a time came when I was... 22 years, yes. I started praying for a husband ah. without knowing where he's coming from. Yes. So when I looked at him and there was a strong love, yeah. more than the normal love among the brethren, yeah. then I started praying yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke to me that wow. this is the man. Wow. I confirmed. Mm -hmm. After so that, did you go after him and tell no, him, I, Buana, I'm a sermon, you're No, <laughs> I was fearing. <laughs> Then I said, yeah. Lord, it's me to speak, yeah. but I know you'll speak on my behalf. Amen. Because we Africans, for a lady to go for a man, yes. it's very it's, shameful. It's, an, it's not African. Yes. Yeah, so Pastor Dauphin, you hold that thought and then we'll go on. Uh, our viewer, this is getting deeper <laughs> and nicer. Because we try as much as we can to inspire people that are younger than us. If there's one thing you can learn, that's our joy. Amen. See you after the break. So welcome back our viewer, um, as always we have wonderful guests like Pastor Dolphin and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, Covenant Television Network and uh, Reverend Ruth Wamoyo and of course uh, our YouTube channel is open with so many of the gorgeous women show and many other programs on CTN. Uh, my guest Pastor Dolphin, uh, before we went for the break she just hinted that God had confirmed to you that that is the man for you and uh, we said it's an african for a lady to step out yes and uh, go and tell the man i love you mm. that's a topic for discussion anyway our viewer yes. and you are free to give your opinion and uh, nowadays people are courageous enough in our mm. time 
Uh, you know. Even facing a man to tell him, even him telling he, you he loves you was a bit challenging. Yes. And, and maybe probably because of village life and all that, mm -hmm. uh, which was okay for them. Mm -hmm. But I think the kind of knowledge that is there is still okay. So, Pastor, how did God confirm to you? Because you are still together after 20, 22 years. Yes, we are together. The way yeah. God confirmed it to me, I had peace. Mm -hmm. in my heart. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes when I look at him when before we engage ourselves in engagement, mm -hmm. there are some things I could see, but in my heart I feel peace and ah, love him. Wow. That is a confirmation. So he was not a perfect person. He is not a he was not a even now he's not a perfect man. Definitely. But right. because of that peace, yeah. love and confirmation from the Lord. Yeah. Everything is working through the grace. Amen. Amen. So now um, you got married. Uh, how, begin now from when you got married. Uh, when I got married, I got married 1998. Mm -hmm. We wedded in Tana mm -hmm. After five months, the Lord started speaking to us. Mm -hmm. We were under our reverence. Uh, Maurice Busuru, the Lord starting speaking to us that our time to be in Tana River is over. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to come to Nairobi. Wow. By then my husband left home, Ushago, and came to Nairobi. He worked as an engineer in Nia Sun's company for six months. Mm -hmm. Then he was transferred to Tana River. When he was here, mm -hmm. he was attending full gospel Madare, mm -hmm. area one. Mm -hmm. So after, after we wedded, the Lord started speaking. Then we prayed mm -hmm. and we said to one another, now we have to go to our reverend and mm -hmm. tell him what is going on. Mm -hmm. It was not easy. I can imagine. Um, he, it was My not easy. My spiritual father loved me. Yes. And I loved him. I loved both of them. Yes. So we went and told him, Dad, this is what the Lord is saying. Mm -hmm. And he said, no. You are not going anywhere. The Lord mm -hmm. has not yet spoke mm -hmm. to me. Oh, you will yeah. not come out of I know here and ministry I am not aware <laughs> till I hear the voice of God. Then wow. we went back. Mm -hmm. Keep on praying, praying. The Lord keep on speaking, speaking. We went again for the second time and tell, told him, Father, this is what the Lord is saying. He said, I told you till I hear him speaking about you. So this time your husband is still serving in the branch he was in? Yes. And you're still and serving I'm, in the main branch? Or yes. are you serving together? No, now we were given a branch okay. where he was serving. Mm. So we went for the second time. He refused. He said, I've not heard the Lord. I'm also praying. But the Lord came and spoke to us vividly that if you are still going to be in this place, it will be at your own risk. Wow. When the Lord spoke that, we really cried because we need the blessings of our Father. Yes, you just uh, can't leave the church like yes, that. Yes, we needed somebody who, who can be brought there to take care of those mm -hmm. members. Then we said, whom shall we obey? It's good to obey our Father. At the same time, we have to obey the voice of God. Mm -hmm. We prayed, we prayed, no answer. Then we decided, let us go to Nairobi. And you are a young couple. We are a young couple, six months in marriage. Wow. Imagine how the church struggled. They did everything for us. In fact, it was the best wedding in that yes. area. Now, our best couples were coming from Nairobi. They were living in Gomongo. And also the Lord spoke to them that we are no longer supposed to be in that place. We are supposed to come to Nairobi. That is where the Lord wants us to serve. So we told them everything. And he said what we can afford for now, we can give you a room. But how you are going to live, how you are going to eat, we can't afford. Mm -hmm. But we said, because the Lord has said, let us go and wait for the Lord. The Lord told us to come and wait until we hear his voice. So we could not afford even the transport from Tanarivo to Nairobi. So they sent us the money through Telegram by then. There was no oh, yeah. phone. was yeah. Telegram through Posta. <laughs> Posta was very popular that yes. time. So we drew the money and we came. When he came, they gave us a room. Mm -hmm. 
what we so you left now you didn't tell you we didn't the tell church. Her. We didn't tell the church, we didn't tell even Reverend, we just moved very early in the morning. We organized and the we moved. Bene the, the benefits when, of being here. When they woke up in the morning, <laughs> their pastor has disappeared. Has disappeared. <laughs> By then we could not, we, there was no any means of communication. I know. <laughs> so we came, our best couples gave us a room. In that room, we had only one mattress, stove, and those kitchen utensils. So you left everything that you were given We internally. could not afford even mm. to carry them, even transport. The church that we were given was in a rural area interior. In oh. fact, we served there for six months. The, the offering that we could get, the best offering, was 15 shillings. In that village, in Tana River, you know, it's a semi-desert. Yes. So they depend on floods, they plant. So when they come to church, they depend on you. Some of them have to pass to our house. They take a cup of tea and then we go to the church. Oh. So it was not easy. It and was you're not a young easy. couple. So yeah, yeah, young no, couple. Now, that, that, now that makes a, a lot of sense. So when we came, mm -hmm. the Lord told us when we come, we should be, we should wait till we hear his voice. Our couples gave us a room. We were there for two months. Mm -hmm. We suffered. We really suffered. I Without was, food? Yes. They gave us food once because they could not afford to feed us. Mm -hmm. But when my husband was in Nairobi, he was going in full gospel, so he has friends like youths. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we were waiting for the Lord to speak, we were going to full gospel mother. So those friends of his, sometimes they could come yeah. and give us milk for, for just a day. The remaining yeah. days, yeah. We could you are, starve. You are, you are in the Till sometimes I was fainting. You know, you fast ah. till you say I'll not fast, but you'll fast forcefully. So after two months, God spoke. Mm -hmm. Now it's the time you can start. Look for a place to serve me. We don't have even a coin. Yes, there was nice places where I could go and serve but we went to another school. There, is, there was a small school, kindergarten. So we talked to that man, he wanted money. We told him, for now we have nothing, we cannot promise, just give us. When God will provide, we'll give. He agreed and we started there. The first Sunday, it was me and my husband. At church? At church. Ah. I worshiped sitting down because I was weak. He preached and then, during the time of, of offering, we gave nothing. <laughs> Just tell <laughs> me, within this time, were you always a good wife or did you, were you tempted to be like the wife of Job? No, complain? I was a good wife. You be never felt like you, you made a mistake? No, because I know what ministry was. I lived in the house of my spiritual father, ah, so yeah. I knew what was going on. Yeah. Uh, also, mom was very nice mother. He was yeah. always... She mentored you. Yes. Ah, okay. mm -hmm. So I knew it is God. Yeah, so you, you, there was no offering for the first no, service? there was no offering. Uh -huh. So the following Sunday, we got one couple. Wow. And that man is now a pastor in Muranga. Ah. Yes. That is They far. just walked in. They, yes, they just walking. They were just in the house. When we were in Madare, we told the pastor to, to give us a cover. And he told us according to full gospel uh, plans, I, they have regions in, they have kilometers they, that they are supposed to build. Yes. They have a church in Kariobangi, so they cannot build a church in Gomongo. Yes. They have to go far away. Yeah. So they said, we cannot give you a cover. So we just started without any cover. We just started two of us. So the couple came and uh, wow, that they, was good news. They came with their two children. Uh -huh. That is how we've uh -huh. started. Uh -huh. And this man, God touched him. He was paying the rent ah. of that room. Mm -hmm. It was a class. Mm -hmm. How much was the rent at that time? It's long, I cannot remember. You cannot remember. I think it's around two to three hundred. It's I, long. I can imagine. That. It was, <laughs> floor was just dust. We yes. have to sprinkle water, mm -hmm. then we go in okay. for worship, yes. Mm -hmm. From there, after that, we went now in a dump site. Wow. Dandora, phase six. There was a school 
rehabilitation was built there. So we went and requested, they gave us a place to worship. We were there doing keshas, worshiping there. Weekdays, it's a school. Weekends, Weekend, we go for practice, we clean it, and on a Sunday, it's a church. We start uh, doing fundraise little by little, and then we... So now members have started coming? They have started coming from mm -hmm. Gorokocho, mm -hmm. from Gomongo, from Dandora, those slum areas. Mm -hmm. But they could not even afford to feed us. Yes. Till a time came, then we were chased away from the house. We could not pay house rent. Mm. That man, landlord, said, we've seen you, you are a servant of God, and because you cannot afford to pay house rent, please, I'll not take any of your property. Please just walk out. We went out without knowing where we are going. That time, no kid yet. No, we had now two kids. Mm -hmm. We have two ladies. Mm -hmm. And the Lord blessed me. I gave birth 2000 and 2001. So they were two as twins. It was not easy. We were taken out. We stayed outside with our things. My husband was now moving. Still, we could not afford phone, so he went to his friends. We took some of our things to some people, to his friends, not to members now. And we got a place in Baghdad, Dandora Phase 6, near Mwiki, where most of these thugs are living. We were there, and then now we went far from the church. We could walk two hours to the church, but we served God with our two kids. My husband could carry our older sister. I could carry the younger one together with the basket. So at this time, church. he couldn't work as a mechanic anymore because he, no. he was full-time as a pastor. Yes, he was full-time from that time. Yeah. The Lord called him. He started working as a full minister. Wow. So he struggled. We struggled, it was not easy. By that time we were in Dumpside, one of our elders took away some members and went with them. Even at that time? At that time. I oh, think we oh. were around 70 something. Half of the church went. All members. Then we went back where we were. We start again struggling with now bad words, rumors going around but we keep on serving God. One thing that encouraged us, we know the one who called us. We did not call ourselves in the ministry. There is somebody who called us. Mm -hmm. And because he's a, he has allowed this to happen, there is a reason. Up to now, the church has splitted four times. And what um, has happened to the people that have split the church? When they go, they don't succeed. Mm -hmm. In fact, they don't succeed. Mm -hmm. they, they start a church after four to five months, they just split and no more church. Some comes back to they the church. Mm -hmm. Wow. I will take a break, our viewers, as we hear the rest of the story. Um, what a joy to hear a real story from a real woman, mm -hmm. a gorgeous woman that have been through pain. And uh, we desire that everybody that is watching us, if you're a young bride, even if things are not okay, mm. you can persevere. Even mm. if ministry seems a bit hard and difficult, mm -hmm. uh, for us we're in ministry and we look like we are making it, it didn't begin where we are. Yes. No, there is a journey. Everybody has their journey. Some is 20 years, others is five, others is 30, others is 40. But the journey and the process is as good as the end result. So see you after the break as we hear the conclusion of her story. So welcome back our viewer in the last segment of this story. Pastor Dauphin is my guest. So um, in my mind I'm asking your spiritual father, the one in Tana River, mm -hmm. At what point did he, now that he knew, I know basically he knew you left. Mm -hmm. What happened to that church? He wrote, by then, telegram was easy yes. to reach where we are. Yeah, because it was a more of an urgent letter. Yes. Yeah. So we, uh, my husband gave him address of food gospel in Madari mm -hmm. So he wrote a very bitter letter, telegram 
the, during that time, message was to be short. Yes. Yeah, because they used to charge according to the words. Yes. Yeah. So we got the message. We prayed. We didn't talk. But I thank God after six years, the Lord confirmed it to him that he's the one who sent us in Nairobi. And he came and apologized. He prayed together with us. Wow. He blessed us. What a man. Yes. Before From, he did that, were you feeling like orphans? Were you feeling like something is not okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you go to somebody to give you a cover, he asked you, where were you before? Why did, why did that man didn't give you a cover? What's wrong? So they were fearing. No one was ready to give us a cover. If you are saying really you have a spiritual father and you have served under that man, why? So we served six, seven years without any cover. But we thank God when he came, we saw the ministry moving. Wow. Yes. Although we were moving slowly, but we are not. But you are not as, as struggling yes, as you used to. We felt as orphans. We are rejected. We are confused. If you tell somebody your story, he doesn't understand what you are saying. Mm -hmm. So you are just there. But we thank God for his grace. So we were talking about the elders who left and um, yes. they split the church four times. Mm -hmm. And maybe those members would go and of course, when there's a splinter church, it really mm -hmm. never works out. Yes. Um, so how, how, how does it feel to having, having to rebuild again and again? How has that journey been? Because there's a woman serving with her husband somewhere or somebody in ministry and they feel like after this one, I can't take it anymore. But maybe hearing from you, what kept you going? After we've heard that man has split the church, mm -hmm. we lack words. We could not encourage one another. Everyone was quiet, asking why. What have we done? Where have we gone wrong? But then, we have to speak to ourselves first before you encourage your husband or your wife. This is not my work. This is the work of God. Wow. I did nothing to bring these members to the church. It's true. It's God who did, brought them. So I know God will still bring others right. and we keep on serving. And that is a conversation that every pastor must have. But it's hard because rumors has gone around. What were you accused of? Uh, by then we, we, we were told we are not teaching good doctrines. <laughs> And this man got born again in the church. Not oh. that he was from other church. He's a member that we've prayed for and he got born again. So when those rumors were going around, then we said, if you are teaching bad doctrines, it has not started by us. Yeah. Because we have spiritual fathers and mothers and this is what they have been teaching. And we've seen these teachings working in our lives. And if actually you got born again through these teachings, then even your salvation is not genuine. Yes. Oh, yeah. But these people are doing this when God has already blessed them. They oh. come when they were vulnerable. We prayed. We prayed and fasting. God now has uplifted them. Now we are bad. But we thank God. God allows everything with a purpose. Amen. So yeah. as a first lady, um, the wife of the senior pastor, that is a very hot seat. Mm, very hot. So how, how have you sat on it and what courage, encouragement would you give a first lady? Because um, several years have been asked this question because I've been a pastor's wife as well. Wow. And it's a very challenging position. Mm. It's very challenging. Very challenging. Especially because uh, if you're, if before you become a pastor, you serve behind the scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, people sometimes you're misunderstood and many feel you're the person to conquer mm -hmm. to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. So how have you handled that? The thing that has helped me, I know my God, not the God of my husband. Mm -hmm. I've been serving this God when I am alone. Mm -hmm. When I'm in trouble, I've seen him. Oh, yes. When I'm weak, I've seen him. Mm -hmm. So in all these, I was strong because I know the one who has called me. Amen. So I said even if my husband will retreat or hesitate, Mila, I'll push on. 
you have a personal relationship with Jesus. I have a Jesus. personal. Wow. He, Jesus is mine and I'll serve him. Amen. So I started praying hard and quoting verses. So prayer, but, knowing and, the word of God. Uh, that is what encouraged me most because there was nowhere you can go and evangelize mm -hmm. because we are known now mm -hmm. with those bad rumors that you are teaching first doctor. Yes, but we told God, mm -hmm. you are the one who brought them and we know you will still bring others. And let me tell you, that's a label that every, almost every genuine man of God has been given. Mm -hmm. Personally, I've been told that enough times. Yes. Um, I can, Apostle Paul mm -hmm. was even accused of teaching doctrine that is not good. Yes. He was always defending, Jesus himself was called the chief of demons. Mm -hmm. So one of the greatest challenge pastor's wife uh, face or oh, is bitterness. Yes. Because after you hear such rumors, and some of them will be very personal, mm -hmm. some of them will even touch on your family. Mm -hmm. So how have you got, apart from your personal relationship with Jesus in prayer and the word, how have you been able to guard your heart? Because you know this person split the church, mm -hmm. and uh, you know what they are saying, and you know it's a lie. First of all, I have to, I worked for my heart to forgive them. Wow. And the other thing that has encouraged me, if God allowed them to do so, who am I? Wow. Because when they are planning this, God saw, God allowed them to do it. Mm -hmm. So I forgave them because after that, you find some are coming crying. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were together, things were good. But now, everything has now, everything is not going good. So we are coming back, forgive us. I gave them a room. I forgave them. That is what has helped me mm. to forgive them because this is not my work. If the owner of the work has allowed the enemies to come and attack his work, mm. who am I, a steward, just to take care of it? So I forgave them and my heart got healed. Amen. I bless them. Amen. And I see them coming back. Oh, yes. Amen. I think one of the greatest virtues and qualities you have to have as a pastor's wife. Yes. And as a pastor yourself mm -hmm. is, a, is a large heart. Amen. That can accommodate everyone. everyone. So what would be your last remarks to a couple that is serving God, a young girl that is serving God? Mm -hmm. uh, you could speak to them in that camera and just speak words of hope and encouragement mm -hmm. and say a prayer. Amen. A part of your husband being called mm -hmm. as a pastor you are also called. Yes. So whatever your husband is going through, you are part of it. Mm. And this work does not belong to you. Mm. This word, this work has the honor. Amen. Just be there, support one another, mm. encourage one another, allow the owner of the work to do it the way he wants. Amen. If he'll allow the enemies to come and destroy, let them come and destroy the work, mm -hmm. but they will not destroy the call and the burden that the Lord has put in your heart. Amen. Serve God without members. Serve God because you are the one who was called to serve God. Oh yeah. Sometimes God builds our spirit in the things that are happening. It's good for some to go forth to have experience so that they can encourage the, the ones that are coming. Oh yes. So when the Lord has allowed, I cannot say the enemy, the Lord allows all this with a purpose. Mm -hmm. We should be good learners. Mm -hmm. We should not be quick to blame and to curse, mm -hmm. but to be keen and to see and to hear what the Lord is doing. Mm -hmm. This journey is a hard journey. Uh, Christ passed through it. We are men, we must, but you as pastor's wives, mm -hmm. sometimes when the ministry is now raising up, mm -hmm. you find your husband is being known more than you. Oh yes. <laughs> and you say, how you comes, the nail on the head. how comes, and yet mm -hmm. we started when we are two. And now I'm still a pastor's wife. He was an evangelist. He, pro, he is now a pastor, and soon he'll be a reverend and a bishop, a bishop, and yet I'm still a pastor's wife. Wow. Let me tell you this. Step on well. Wow. Don't look on the crown that the Lord is giving your husband. Mm -hmm. 
also when you serve, you'll have a title. Because my husband was a pastor and I was a pastor's wife. Because I know that I'm called, my service will give me a title. Now, I am the immediate pastor after my husband. We have also a pastor and his wife. But because I know that I'm called, you know there is something that I was looking all, and I asked my mom, why when a young lady is a youth, they are very active? Yes. And when they got into marriage, what happens? Sometimes when my husband comes here and preach, you'll ask him to bring her wife here. Mm -hmm. But when they are on the altar, you'll wonder, is this a new covenant and a bishop living together or what? I have realized when ladies go into marriage mm -hmm. because of the challenges, they stop seeking God. And they become bitter. And they become bitter, yeah. they murmur, they mm -hmm. complain. And lose their personal and relationship with yes. God. Yes, wow. so you find a servant of God will serve anointing, presence of God will be in the house. When, her wi when his wife comes, you I don't believe there anything. is a very great difference. gap or difference. Wow. But I have decided and purposed. This is my God. Oh, yes. I know him and he knows me. Amen. When he steps there, when he removes his feet, I'll step there. And when he delays, I'll pass him. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Could you just make a short prayer for somebody <laughs> that is downhearted? Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, mm. thank you for this opportunity. I know it is not in vain. There is somebody who has been hearing us. I know that, Lord, you've spoken to her or to him. Holy Spirit of God, energize them. Energize them so that we may serve you. I know there is a lot of discouragement, but Holy Spirit of God, you are going to encourage them. You are going to empower them. You are going to give them power. You are going to give them revelation for your own glory. We worship you because you are good. In Jesus' holy name, we pray and give thanks. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Dauphin, for being with us and yes. sharing your time with us. Thank you. Indeed, it was so refreshing to hear you talk. Thank you. So uh, my, my view, I don't seek to be relevant just for the sake of relevance. Mm. It's important to wait uh, on God as you go through the process. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, something that we have all learned out of this is that resilience and just waiting upon God until your change comes. From me, yeah. Reverend Ruth Wamu and the CTN family, is just tell you bye-bye and God bye. bless you. Keep watching and sharing. Amen. Bye-bye.